Star Trek Beyond is a science fiction film. About two weeks ago, I said Star Trek Into Darkness was a huge step down from its predecessor because, to me, it didn't live up to what made the 2009 Star Trek film amazing. So when I went in to go see this film, Star Trek Beyond is less interesting than the previous one. But this film's not bad, it has its good moments. Like, it's not a terrible film, it still does have great science fiction and it does have the great lore of Star Trek in it, and it also, you know, has a great story. Although, to be fair, there are more negative points than there are positive points, so I'll get the negatives out of the way first. And while the first two Star Trek films had a great rush of energy put into them, here it felt a bit more slower, took its time, and to be honest, I was kind of a little bit bored. Well, the opening of this film didn't really set anything up for me to be invested in later on. Basically, for the first 30 minutes, nothing exciting happened. Like, the opening did nothing, and then there was just boring diplomatic talks, which should be interesting in a Star Trek film, yet, yet here, it just came off as boring. And I know I said at the start how the writing is good. Like, the writing is good at parts, but then there, but then there are other parts where the writing is not so good. I really did want to like this film because, like, the 2009 Star Trek film got me invested in this series. It made me follow all the TV shows, all the lore, and, like, here, here, in the, here with this film, it just feels like a big step down. And speaking of the action, it's not that interesting here. Also, for some reason, some of the action scenes have shaky cam in them, which makes it hard to see the action, which this is a problem that bugs the hell out of me. Why have shaky cam in an action film? It not, uh, not only does it blur the action, but it, also, but it also just becomes a nuisance to watch. Getting into visuals now, while the first two films had great visuals, here the visuals were a bit like meh, like not that impressive and like, like no, nothing extravagant was put into them to make them stand out more. In fact, the planet they go on feels like they took the planet from After Earth and just made that the setting. That's what it felt like. And one of the hugest problems in this film is the locations. And spoiler alert, they only go to two places. This giant, this giant city that's floating in space and the planet. And that's it. There is the crew walking around the Enterprise, but that's it. Like, with the, first, with the first two films, it felt like they went somewhere, and you felt like you were going on an adventure with them. Here it just feels like they're going for a pit stop at some place. To me, the locations just didn't feel varied enough. Overall, even with those problems, I would still recommend this film, and this film still stays true to being a Star Trek film, first and foremost. While there is not that great writing, there is still good enough writing to make it, to make this film feel like it is a Star Trek film. And while the characters aren't impressive this time around, these are still the same characters that, you know, we've all, we all know and love. Although since this year marks the 50th anniversary of this franchise, to me, they could have done it better, but I still had a good time with this film, and I'm going to give this film a 7 out of 10. Before I finish this review, in a couple of days' time, me, Good Chap Gamer, and another crew member from Film Cafe have joined together to give a group discussion on Star Trek Beyond. So if you want to see that review, click on the link in the description below to go to the Film Cafe YouTube channel, as in a couple of days we will publish that video. So be sure to keep on the lookout for that. Other than that, I'm the X5, and if you like what you see, be sure to like my Facebook page, follow me on Twitter, and subscribe to my channel below. I'm the X5, thank you for watching.